So remember from last day that alkanes are uh, organic compounds which contain a long chain or a continuous chain of carbons which only have single bonds between them. Now let's look at how to name compounds that have a substituent or a substituted group on it. Uh, sometimes those alkanes contain branches or other groups which are not part of the main chain and that's what a substituent or a substituted group is. In order to name those alkanes, it's necessary to have a set of rules. The first thing you need to do is identify the longest continuous carbon chain. Remember that changes in direction are not important, and it's not necessary that they be written left to right. It's only important that the chain is one, the longest chain, and two, that it isn't interrupted or broken by other elements. Two, I'm going to ask you to circle that chain. Quite often people will skip this step, but if you do, most people will lose track of those extra or substituent groups. The number of carbons in the longest chain determines the root. Remember if it's one, that's meth, two is eth, three is prop, four is bute, and then you should remember the others from uh, other activities we've done this year. Anything that does not end up in the circle is a substituent, where a substituent is a branch and the number of carbons in the chain determines the name uh, and this time, we'll, to say that it's a branch, we end it with a YL. So let's look at how to name the following particular compounds. So starting with the one on the left, the first step is always to identify the longest possible carbon chain. Looking at it, I can see chains that are possibly uh, three, or I can see a chain which is uh, five carbons long. Just to illustrate the point that the direction doesn't matter, I'm going to choose to use this particular circle. What we see for that particular circle is that it has one, two, three, four, five carbons long, meaning that this is a pent, and because there's only single bonds between the carbons, it's a pentane. Now the th next thing we need to do is identify which direction we're going to count from. So we always count to give the lowest possible number to the substituted groups or group. If I started at this end, it would be one, two, three, four, five, meaning that that extra group is attached to the fourth carbon. If I start from this end, it goes one, two, which is obviously lower. So I'm going to start at the bottom, numbering, numbering one, two, three, four, five. When I look at the substituted group, Let's just change the color here so that we can be clear. This substituted group is one carbon long, meaning that that is a meth. And because it's a branch or something off of the main chain, it's a methyl group. When you put names together, letters do not have anything in between them. So although you may leave yourself some space to start writing those things in, there's not technically a space between the Y or between the L of the methyl and the P of the pentane. The last thing is to say what number of the chain the carbon is attached to, the methyl group is attached to, and in this case it's attached to the second one. So it's a two methyl pentane. When we have numbers and letters beside each other, they are separated by a dash. Numbers and letters can never touch each other. Okay, so now let's try the second one, which looks a little more intimidating because obviously there's a number of different directions you can go. So I can start up here and go one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could start down here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, much longer, or this way going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, although direction doesn't matter, I'm going to choose to draw straight across here just to show you that we'll get the same naming system as we did when we handled the example on the left. When we identify that group, remember that we have to count how many carbons are in that longest chain, this being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The root for seven is hept, H-E-P-T, and all of the carbons in the chain are attached by single bonds, which means that this is a heptane. 
Now we have to identify what are those additional or substituted groups that we have off of the main chain. Well, we have one here, and we have one down here. Let's look at the name of those groups first and then see how we would put those into the full name of the compound in a second. Looking at the one at the top, it's one carbon long. The root for one is meth, so this is a methyl group because it's a branch off of the main chain. Looking at the one at the bottom, you now have two carbons. The root for two is eth, and because that's again a branch off of the main chain, that's an ethyl group. Remember that we're number, when we start numbering uh, the chain to identify where those branches are, we do it so that you get the lowest number or set of numbers for your substituents. If we start at this end, they would be attached to the 1, 2, 3 carbon for the methyl and the 3 for the ethyl. At this end, it would be attached to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the fifth carbon for the methyl and the fifth carbon for the ethyl. So I am going to start numbering from the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a three methyl group, and this is a three ethyl group. When we put those two things into the name, we'd write them alphabetically. Uh, and if you were to have multiple ones, as we'll talk about in a bit, uh, the, the prefix that would go onto that is is ignored. So it's always alphabetical by the uh, by the methyl or the ethyl part of the name. So in this case we're going to write 3 ethyl, 3 methyl, heptane. Remember that numbers and letters can never touch so they have to be separated by a dash. So I need a dash here between the 3 and the E. I need a dash here between the L and the 3 and a dash here between the 3 and the M, making 3-ethyl-3-methylheptane. You can see how very quickly the names of these compounds can get really long.